Good morning, my sisters and brothers, and welcome to worship at Muncie United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are here, and we hope you will let us know you are here by going to muncie.org connect and filling that out. We really hope you will do that if you are with us for the first time so that we may follow up with you and even pray with you if you would like that. Hear this. In this place, you are welcome, wanted, and accepted. Now may we join our voices in our call to worship. The hour has come to worship our God. To gather together, together as people of faith, to, to glorify the God of all grace. The time has come to devote ourselves to prayer. To bring the burdens we carry, to lift our hopes to the God who hears us. The hour has come to rejoice and make God's name known. To lift a song of thanksgiving, to praise God for all our blessings. Our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Please join in singing. Will you join me as we pray together this morning? Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, new every morning is your love. And we know that you are working for good in this world. 
Fill us with your spirit that we might know who you are and who we are as your children. Be with us this day and every day as we seek to do your will. Rescuing God, parent of orphans and protector of widows, you give the desolate a home to live in and lead out the prisoners into prosperity. Help us to order the patterns of our common life to support the health of your human family and the welfare of your world, that we may be one with Christ as Christ is one with you. Loving and steadfast God, you have given to your church the inheritance of faith in Christ alone and bestowed your Holy Spirit's love upon us to make us one in you. Help us to grow in strength and courage to witness to this hope that all may find your saving love eternally in Christ, that we may all be one with Christ as Christ is one with you. Life-giving God, you send rain in abundance to relieve the parched crops and thirsty land and make clean the winds of faith. Help us to find sustainable solutions as we seek to honor and care for the well-being of your creation. Fill us with your Spirit's power that we may be one with Christ as Christ is one with you. Resurrecting God, you draw near to those who are sick and dying and you call them home to be with you. May we all know the joy of life eternal shared with you and help us to live each and every day as your children and to be one in Christ as Christ is one with you. And now, O oh God, we pray that you would fill us with your Spirit, and as we join together, let us pray the prayer your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey friends, for those of y'all who do not know me, my name is Katie Jackson, and I have the pleasure of working with the younger children at Muncie. Growing up, we would drive every summer from Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to my grandparents' house in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I have great memories of going to the river with my whole extended family. We would laugh and play games and have a cookout and set, out fi set off fireworks at night. It was so much fun. And one of my favorite things to do was to go fishing with my cousins. We would go out and find sticks, find some string and tie whatever string we found on the stick. We would attach a hook. Then we would go and root around the ground and pull out worms and put them on the hook. And to the riverside we went. Now let me tell you a little secret, friends. I was terrible fishing this way. I don't even think I caught anything all those years. Most of the times I would cast my homemade rod out and I would bring it back so excited and nothing. And many a times I would lose the worm in the process. There's a verse in the Bible, 1 Peter 5, 7, and it's one of my favorite verses. It says, cast all of your anxieties on God because he cares for you. The word cast means throw upon or place upon. Sometimes when I'm upset or when I'm worried, I think of this verse and I also think about fishing. I pretend that all of my worries are like that slimy, nasty worm. And I pretend that I put it on the hook and I throw it out to the living water, to the river. That is God's love and God's care. And I pray and I usually I feel so much better. My friends, God loves you so much and he cares about you. He wants you to tell him all of your feelings, the good feelings and the not so good feelings, the feelings of worry and sadness. So I encourage you to tell him. You can do this through praying and talking to him. You can write him 
in a journal or write a poem. You can play some music. You can draw a picture. Whatever you do to express yourself, do it to God. Because God is listening to you and God cares for you. Let us pray now. Dear God, thank you for your love and care. Thank you for caring for us. And thank you for allowing us to come to you with all of our feelings. Help us to remember to do so. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Peter 4, 12-14 Dear friends, don't be surprised about the fiery trials that have come among you to test you. These are not strange happenings. Instead, rejoice as you share Christ's suffering. You share his suffering now so that you may also have overwhelming joy when his glory is revealed. If you are mocked because of Christ's name, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory indeed, the spirit of God rests on you. 1 Peter 5, 6-11 through 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under God's power so that he may raise you up in the last day. Throw all your anxiety onto him because he cares about you. Be clear-headed, keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. To him be power forever and always. Amen. There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome. And I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. In the valley, I know you're here with me. And surely your goodness and your mercy follow me. So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. This is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome. And I will lift my song up. Praise the I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. Welcome to my home. Like many of you, I've been working from home over the recent weeks. I set up this little desk at this table thinking this wouldn't last long. As it's gone on, my stacks have grown. I've overflowed to a second table. Some of you have asked me about coming to worship in your pajamas when we return to on-site worship. So I've joined you this morning in what I usually have on at home. Not my pajamas, but my typical work-at-home wardrobe. The past few weeks, we've been using the letter of 1 Peter to help us consider this time while we're apart. You'll remember these early church believers were dealing with some persecution, some discerning about how they were to live faithfully in difficult times. They had been advised to stay steadfast, to not give up even when it wasn't easy. Hang tough, stay faithful, keep alert, don't lose your way. Even Christ endured suffering. It's worth the effort. All of those phrases were trying to engender a spirit of optimism. That spirit of optimism is a common theme in many of the biblical texts that were written to the young church. As the scriptures affirm God's continued redeeming work, a joy begins to infiltrate even into the signs of suffering. So you find words of praise and worship in Revelation encouragement to persecuted Christians, and you find Paul writing, Rejoice in the Lord always to the Philippians as he sits in prison. These amazing expressions of hope express gratitude for God's faithfulness and for God's commitment to sustain us and bring hope and comfort even in times of suffering and despair. And these words of assurance shape the life of the faithful. Gratitude and thanksgiving become core expressions of the life of the faithful for the early church and even continue to this day. As far back as 1 Peter, the scriptures include instructions to the church to live a life of sincere love, of forgiveness, of generosity, and openness. You know, we've seen these characteristics illustrated in so many ways during this time of quarantine. Recently, the Village Church in Nashville was inspired to create their own YouTube show called People Being Awesome, PBA, and used it to feature some of their congregation who are spending time being, you guessed it, awesome. Well, we've got lots of folks who are being awesome as well. Many of us have spent hours, lots and lots of time on Zoom in recent weeks, so here we go again. I want you to meet three of our awesome folks. One of our awesome folks is Steve Baldwin. Steve serves as the coordinator of our Northside Food Ministry team, who puts together and delivers food boxes to help stretch family food resources. When the COVID-19 virus began to change our community, Steve immediately helped us increase our food delivery from once to twice per month and to expand our list of families. Now that hadn't been easy. Preparing the boxes and making deliveries while observing social distancing has taken lots of thinking and planning and designing new ways of doing the work. So Steve, I just want to say thank you to you for the work that you and your team have been doing. 
you've served on behalf of Muncie and you've helped us be good neighbors to the Northside community and we're grateful. I know it hadn't been easy and I have been touched by the ways you all have continued to persevere. Would have been easier to say, we love you, but we just can't do it right now. But instead you've done more. Can you tell me why you all didn't just quit during this time? Why did you keep on going? Carol, we had, uh, we've been involved in this uh, food ministry as part of our overall partnership to Northside for going on five years now. Um, and it's been such a blessing. And uh, we knew a few months ago when this virus broke out and we began to understand its significance to the community, not just the health significance, but the economic uh, significance to families who are already struggling, many of them that we serve. And so uh, when, when uh, we had the chance uh, to make a decision, uh, we, just, we prayed about it as a group and we talked about it and we said, we need to meet this need. Uh, God has brought this to us. We need to meet it. We know we can. Uh, through his strength and encouragement, and uh, to a person, there wasn't anyone uh, that that uh, was involved that didn't think we could meet it. And as a result, of course, the numbers expanded in terms of those that we serve. But the great thing is, God multiplied our numbers too. He okay. multiplied the number of people that came to us and said, "Hey, we we know that this is a a, a big thing," and uh, we want to be involved. And so we've got probably twice as many people involved now uh, in what we're doing through uh, the COVID virus time as we did before. Uh, who knows what that bodes in the future, but it was the faith that we had in God and knowing that uh, we can answer that call uh, if, if he's involved in it and needs for it to be done for his children. So, that was the motivation. All right. Thank you all. Just so grateful to you and all your team who have stepped up and helped us to serve. So we appreciate you hanging in and figuring out how to make sure our neighbor, neighbors had their needs to be met. So thank you so much. Some folks have gone above and beyond. Others have tried new things and found ways to help that were unique to this particular time. Tricia Wynn listened to the needs of the community, and she looked at what she had at home, and she began making masks. Tricia posted on Facebook about her experiences and what this has meant to her. So hi, Tricia, it's good to see you, and thank hi. you for the ways that you're giving of your time to make masks for the community. You wrote on Facebook about your experience in a way that really touched my heart. I wondered if you could tell us about how you've seen God at work through this new thing. Sure. So first of all, I am not a reflective person and the people who are watching this, who know me know that, that it's just not really who I am. And so I think this sewing time has been used to make me be a little more reflective. And it started at first with, I want people to wear masks because I want people to protect me and I want to protect other people. So I want um, people to wear a mask. And I had a sewing machine. I had basic skills that my mother had taught me and I had some fabric and a little bit of elastic. And so I said, I can make a few masks and if nothing else, you know, help protect a few people and hopefully save some lives. So I started doing that and begrudgingly did it. And then I realized I was kind of connecting with my mother and my grandmother. And I didn't, I didn't think about that. And, you know, I can't see my mom right now, even though she's an hour away, but she taught me to sew. So thinking about what she had taught me and trying to remember what I needed to know and using my grandmother's old sewing machine. And my grandmother passed away when I was in college. So to connect with her in that way and, and know that I was using a tool that she had used probably to bless other people years ago was really special to me. And then I ran out of materials and I was like, all right, now I can stop making masks because I'm out of materials. And as soon as I ran out of fabric, somebody gave me more fabric. As soon as I had to buy elastic, somebody would call and say, I've got some elastic or they would donate money just into my PayPal account without me asking in the exact amount that I needed 
or I ran out of thread. I was about to run out of thread and I didn't even know it. And somebody said, Hey, I'm going to bring you some thread. And I was like, I don't think I need thread, but I did. <laughs> so I realized then that God was using this <laughs> and that God was working on this and this wasn't about me and, and I needed to just keep sewing until the supplies ran out. So I'm still sewing. The supplies keep coming <laughs> and it has, it's been a blessing. It's been really neat. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for giving of your time and your skills and seeing a way that you could share and letting God work through you. We're grateful. Thanks. I want to share with you one more example of people being awesome. When we had to move to handing out to-go brunch bags for open door worship, Wendy Whitmore worked with her sons, Dax and Alex, to add a little bit of extra love. So, hey, Wendy, hey, Dax and Alex and Paul, it's good to see all of you all. I wanted to ask you, Wendy, about when you prepared the open door brunch bags for the Virgil Anderson class. I noticed that you all added notes of love and encouragement. You know, it would have been enough just to provide the food. That was plenty gracious just in and of itself. But what made you go above what was required to add those notes and add a little bit of extra love? Well, I really wanted to just really get my boys involved in the project. So we had bought all the groceries and brought them to our house and placed different things in there. But when I was remembering back to when we did Open Door in person, I remember one person saying to me, thank you so much for seeing my humanity. And it really, and it touched my heart that this isn't just about food, it's about connection between humans. And so at the very last minute, um, I asked the boys, would they mind making little post-it note notes? And they just wrote different things. And when I talked with Dax about the notes, do you remember what you said? What um, He had said, I just want to remind them that God loves them. Perfect. So that's the reason. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you all for all you're doing to spread the love and Paul for your work in healthcare during these days too. We're grateful for all of your service. Thank you. So how about you? What awesome thing are you doing while we're apart? Now, let me remind you, awesome acts of faith may look like mundane choices. What they do is help you keep the course of faith in mind. They help you show love. They help you be clear headed so that the noise of the immediate doesn't cloud your wisdom and your ability to follow the God we trust. For me, my act of faith has been to move from giving from a handwritten check to recurring electronic giving. It doesn't sound dramatic, and it wasn't. But when I prayed about how I could be a part of the ongoing witness of the church so that our ministries continued without interruption, I found that changing the way I was giving my tithe was one of the concrete acts of trust that I could do. It's one of the things that I sat here at my computer and accomplished while we've been apart. So as we live as the church scattered to our separate places, I invite you to look for the concrete. Look for the ways that move you toward hope, connection, steadfastness, and gratitude. And remember the promises of this little letter from 1 Peter from long ago that reminds us of a living hope in Jesus Christ that calls us to a connection rooted in God's call that challenges us to stay the course of faith even when life isn't easy. We are learning new things right now that will serve us well by God's grace as we go forward. This little letter ends with these wonderful words, important to remember so that we can live faithfully while we're apart. Words of promise for long ago and for now. Words that move us to gratitude and generosity of life and spirit. Hear these words of assurance from 1 Peter. After you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, 
empower, strengthen, and establish you. To Him be power forever and always. Amen. In the midst of the struggle, while we're apart, may that promise sustain us, shape us, and call us to serve. Amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when strife God is at work through the people called Muncie United Methodist Church. Even though the COVID-19 restrictions have temporarily closed our doors, our hearts, our minds, our hands are still open to find creative and courageous ways to serve others in the name of Christ. Every day, the ministry continues through this place. Every day, people are served meals through the melting pot on the street. We continue to provide financial assistance to those who are struggling. We continue small group studies online. We continue to worship, and hundreds of not only our members, but also guests from all over the country join us as we worship God together. We are providing counseling through Zoom meetings and over the phone. We are caring for those who are ill and those who are homebound and those who have struggles and crises that are ongoing. What a great thing it is to be a part of Muncie United Methodist Church. God is faithful, so let us be faithful in our giving even while we are apart. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks and praise for your faithfulness to us. And we pray through your Holy Spirit that you would continue to transform us and make us generous and joyful givers in the name of Christ. Receive these gifts as we offer them in Christ's name. Amen.
are blessed by a gracious and generous God, aren't we? And when we think of all that God has given to us, how can we not respond? I'm so grateful for Steve and Tricia and Wendy and for the stories of generosity that they shared with us this morning. I know you have your own stories of generosity and gratitude, and I'm thankful to you for all the ways that you continue to serve. I mentioned in the sermon that one of the ways that I've chosen to serve during this time is to change the way that I give my tithe. Some of you may be willing and able to do the same. We want to make that easy for you so that you too can continue to share in the ministries of the church to help us be faithful in the present and prepared to continue to serve in the future to be vital and alive in our worship and praise of the God we trust and in service with our neighbors. So here's how to give electronically. Go to muncie.org slash give. Muncie.org slash give. There you will find options to give a recurring gift, a one-time gift, or to set up giving by text message. You can get there through your computer or through your phone, and it will take you straight to the donation page on the website. Complete your information, and if you can, make it a recurring gift. Or you can even get to the website by using your phone camera to hover over the QR code that you see right now on your screen. While you're at the webpage, and each Sunday, as we pause for the offering, say a prayer of thanksgiving for God's grace and mercy and for those who will be blessed by your gift. Our faithfulness in our giving is as critical to shaping our hearts as Jesus followers during this time while we are apart as it is when we are together. So thank you, thank you for all the ways you give. Now hear these words of blessing that come to us from 1 Peter. May the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. Amen.